there, Shiro fans of the world. I have the new doll that came out from Target. This is pretty darn awesome, isn't it? This is pretty cool artwork here. DreamWorks, Shira, and the Princess of Power. She includes her sword of protection. The sword is also on the plastic bubble as well. Adora discovers her powerful destiny when a magical sword transforms her into the warrior princess Shira. She then leads the rebellion to fight the evil horde and protect her home planet Etheria. Shira, mythical warrior princess. When Adora raises the sword of protection and pledges to fight for the honor of Grayskull, she is transformed into Princess of Power Shira. Power, super strength, shape shifting sword, healing powers, mystical connections to the magic of the planet. Also, look out for these other characters. I have a couple of them. I am going to say, I know a lot of people out there are not happy with the way this Shira is being drawn and the fact that it has no connection to the original Shira that came out back in the 1980s. However, giving this a chance, I think this is a great new story for She-Ra and for people out there to get into it. You can love either one or you can love both like I do. So at this point, I think that this is a great series and I'm excited for season four to come out. As of the making of this video, season three just recently came out. Anyways, that's enough talking on my part. Let's go ahead and open her up. Here she is and she is quite beautiful, although it was a pain in the butt to get her out of the packaging. They put in all these little plastic holding placing Things. I actually don't know what they're called, but just to hold her cape in place, to hold her arms in place, to keep her head in place and her hair, it was just a big mess. But anyways, I got her out and I think she looks great. Close up, you can see that her clothing is real clothing and she also has armor. And of course, she has the nice She-Ra hair, which I think is pretty cool. You can see that her clothing and armor is removable if you choose to do something like that. I've also learned that taking it off armor and clothing from certain toys from the way that they were originally put on, it's sometimes difficult to get it back to the way you like it. She comes with the sword of protection, which is supposed to be the first one's technology. Her huge boots are removable if you chose to do something like that, although I'm probably not going to do it. And close up of her face, her tiara is removable. There is a little piece of plastic in place, sort of just kind of keeping it there. I may end up super gluing this later, being that I'm never going to take her out of it. So I may just put that on just to keep it in spots so that way I can get rid of the little plastic and not have to worry about it. I hate that her gauntlets are so loose like this. It's something that just kind of irritates me whenever you try to pose her. I may end up super gluing these in place as well. Being that this isn't exactly a Barbie doll, she does have a bit more articulation in her, which I'll go through that real quickly. You can see that she has movement in her head, upper arm movement, elbow movement, wrist movement, upper leg movement, and knee movement. There's really no sheath for her sword to hold on to, but there is a slight little hole in her cape, and you could maybe kind of hold it like that if you choose for her not to have it in her hand. Although personally, I will probably always have her having the sword. If anything, she may even hold it aloft as she says the magic words for the honor of Grayskull. All in all, she's a great doll. Whether you're an adult or whether you're a child, I think that she has a lot of potential. Real quickly, I want to show a comparison to the She-Ra doll that came out for Maddie Collector back in 2016 as a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. I love this design. I thought she was really cool and was really hoping we get a catch her at some point down the line. Hey, maybe we will at some point later on. Still, I just wanted to show the two of them next to each other. Now, here's a comparison next to He-Man, or at least the Mondo He-Man that came out. You can see that their heights are somewhat similar similar, but I like to kind of think of her as being She-Ra and He-Man's little sister. Oh, by the way, Skeletor is looming in the background too. As you can see, I picked up a couple of She-Ra's companions that I'm going to be doing a toy review on later. I didn't get a Dora, and I also didn't get the two-pack with She-Ra and Swiftwind, although I may go back and get that. I haven't decided yet. Anyways, though, if you're interested in getting this figure, you had to go to Target, or you can go online to third-party sites like Amazon or eBay, but you may have to pay inflated prices. It's all up to you. I personally think that this is a very cute toy. I love the series. Even though I know there are a lot of haters out there that don't like it, I still think that everyone should at least give it a chance before they judge it. But with that, I will leave you guys. Thank you guys for joining me in this review. Be sure to check out my Patreon site, check out my social media sites, my websites, and everything else out there. Peace, love, namaste, and I will see you guys later. Peace. There's a lot of fan theories out there about how She-Ra and He-Man are connected and how She-Ra is connected to Eternia and how maybe this is part of the multiverse or maybe it's actually part of the same universe but a continuation and much further in the future being that Mara was shown and Mara was part of the new adventures of He-Man. There's all these different kind of things out there. I'm not really quite sure whether or not the creators are going to go that in depth to everything but I do hope that we're going to see He-Man and maybe Prince Adam, maybe something like that at some point down the line because that would be really, really, really cool.